Alright guys, this is Devil's Domain. I've got a release from Arrow Video. This is Stormy Monday. Uh, you might recognize some people on the cover. we got uh, Sean Bean, who uh, yeah, he was like in Lord of the Rings and uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, I'm sure most people know, know him from Game of Thrones. Uh, he is a young loafer, it says, under the wing of a jazz club owner. Uh, who, which is uh, Sting here from The Police, uh, more known for his music than his acting, but he, he's done several acting gigs. Uh, Melanie Griffith's in the movie, and Tommy Lee Jones, of course, you know, up there at the top. Uh, it's a very jazzy artwork on the cover, so it, and you can tell it's, you know, it's, it's, surround, it's like a mob movie surrounded by like jazz music and jazz club. So I'm not I'm like like a huge jazz guy or anything, but uh, I I trust Arrow Video, so so far I haven't been disappointed. Uh, so I'm gonna give this a whirl. It's a film by Mike Figgis, a director I'm not all that familiar with. It says he directed Leaving Las Vegas though, which was a great Nicolas Cage film uh, where he drinks himself to death. So that was pretty cool. I, I, w I wouldn't mind if like Arrow put out that movie. That would be awesome because. I'm not sure if they have a Blu-ray release for that yet. Uh, not in the U.S. anyway. I might be wrong about that, but uh, they should have a Blu-ray release for that if they don't. And it would be awesome if Arrow did that because I love that movie. Uh, cinematographer by Richard Deakins. He did uh, Big Lebowski and No Country for Old Men. Both great movies. Uh, and the jazz course provided by the director himself. And it's first time in the U.S. There's been a... Uh, First time in high definition in the U.S. Uh, so you got the audio commentary, video appreciation by critic Neil Young, then an hour tour of the film's Newcastle locations, uh, theatrical trailer, and reversible cover. So not a whole lot of features on this. Uh, probably like one of the low end releases from Arrow, uh, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Uh, you know, I like the cast. Hopefully, it's gonna be good. Let's open it up. All right, there's the uh, front cover. Stormy Monday. Looks like you know, a little sign for the uh, the club. Uh, maybe that's the name of the club. I'm not. I'm not sure. Tommy Lee Jones, Millie Griffith, Sean Bean, and uh, Sting over there, of course. There's your synopsis. And your special features. Not a whole lot there. And this is a Region A and Region 1 DVD. Uh, they do have this in the UK, I believe. So I'm not sure why they didn't just do like an all-region release. This is actually more expensive than I'd hoped it'd be, especially for like the lack of content here. Uh, usually, I do, you know, I do a pre-order like on Amazon for some of the stuff and. Uh, Usually the price drops quite a bit before it actually comes out. In this case, it did not. So I paid more than I anticipated for this. I think it might have even been cheaper on a Diabolic DVD. So there's the uh, DVD there. There's your Blu-ray. And there's the alternate cover. Looks very 80s. A romantic thriller. Or it could be like early 90s, I'm not sure when this came out. I don't see. 88. So late 80s, early 90s. Before Sean Bean was like a household name. It looks so weird with that beard. I'm so used to it. Like, it seems like every movie's in it, you got a beard. So, uh, you know, they got this booklet. Uh, you know, the arrow's good to get out, putting together a little booklet for most of their films. So that's nice. Pretty nice looking release altogether for a film I've never heard of that I don't think is very, you know, all that popular. But uh, let's pop it in and see how it is.
All right, well, Stormy Monday. Uh, I did like it. Uh, I will say it's definitely not one of my favorite Arrow releases. It's probably like closer to the bottom, actually. Uh, so you have Sean Bean, who's playing uh, Brendan, who is just some young kid. Um, well, I don't know how old he is. He's probably like in his 20s, early 20s, something like that. And uh, he is kind of just like looking for a job. He's, you know, the first time you see him, he's like bathing in a sink. <laughs> like he's got no money, so he's looking for a job. And uh, he's at the mall, of all places. I guess maybe he's looking for work there, because I know he's not spending money. But, you know, he's got his headphones on in the mall, and uh, he he's, like, looking through a paper, looking through the uh, want ads and stuff, and he, he finds, like, a, a help wanted for a jazz nightclub for somebody to clean up and everything. And so he, like, circles it on the thing, and uh, it, uh, while this is going on, you know, Melly Griffith, you know, we, we see her. She, she's, like, asleep. It is, like, weird when you, when you see both of them. They're both, like, in bed. And then they both, like, bathe. You know, she actually has a shower, though. Uh, so she, you know, she has her little shower scene. And then, uh, you know, she's at the mall, too. And she's coming down the escalator. And he doesn't see her. She's not really paying attention, either. So they end up turning into each other have a collision. She spills all her bags. And they kind of have, like, a, you know, they kind of look at each other. And then, you know, she gets her shit and moves on. And it's kind of like, well, okay, well, it, maybe there was something there, but they just ignored it. And, uh, so, you know, he goes to the nightclub and to get the job and Sting is the nightclub owner. Finney is his name. Uh, and so, you know, he hires him and, you know, he's doing the work or whatever. And, uh, Finney is under pressure from this mobster who's played by Tommy Lee Jones. His name's Cosmo to sell the club because, you know, they're doing like a, they got some land development deal. There's like some political crossover with the U.S. Like Cosmo's from Texas. He's a monster from Texas, but he's also, it seems like he's involved in like government and stuff. Uh, not unusual. Uh, so they're trying to just totally rehaul this part of Newcastle. And in order to do that, they have to buy everybody out. And Finney's like not wanting to, do it at all so you know being the mobster he sends people over and there's a really cool scene that i, I really liked where they he sends like these two thugs in and uh they both have briefcases and they both you know the first one he's he's kind of like kind of like the scrawnier one of the two and and, and, and then the other guy he's just kind of like this maniacal look in his eyes like he can't fucking wait to open this briefcase up so, you know, the Scrawnier guy, he's just like, uh, you can, you can either si sign it for me or you can sign it for him. And then he opens up his briefcase, you know, takes out the, the contract, lays it on the table, and then he takes out a picture of, uh, Finney's family and, and, uh, smashes it, smashes the glass, and then he cuts it open, and there's like blood pouring out of the picture, and then he takes a blowtorch and sets it on fire. And then, and then he's like, you know, if this gets to you, go ahead and sign now. And, and if it doesn't get to you, then the next guy's going to take over and it's going to be a lot worse. Uh, but he, he kind of, uh, Brendan kind of gave him a heads up. He overheard something. So he knew this was going to, was coming. So he had a heads up on this whole ordeal. He had his guys ready with, you know, guns coming in, holding these guys up. So he turns the tables on these two henchmen and he takes the maniacal guy's briefcase he's like emptying out and this dude had made like these little arm rests like two you know so there'd be a gap and so it hit, hit your elbow and your wrist and this whole forearm area is just open so he, he like puts it on there and you know the, the baton just smashes it uh so i thought that was pretty cool a little scene there uh that's the one that stands out in my memory out of this whole movie it was like probably one of the better scenes uh, the weird thing, uh, about Sting, though, it's like the way he acts in parts of this movie just don't seem good. Like, I don't want to say he's a bad actor. He, he's, he's probably the weakest actor out of the bunch, you know, particularly Tommy Lee Jones <laughs> and, uh, Sean Bean and Melanie Griffith. Sting's probably the weakest link here, uh, because he's not, like, you know, a seasoned actor, really. He's, he's a musician. And that's probably why they cast him in this role for, like, the head of this, you know, music club. Uh, 
but you know, some scenes he does pretty good, and some scenes it's just really off. It just doesn't seem right for whatever reason. Like there's a scene where he has to meet Tommy Lee Jones on a bridge in like a little private meeting under the radar, and you know, just negotiate this whole situation. And I, I don't know, just the way he reacts to Tommy Lee Jones. Like Tommy Lee Jones steals the screen every time he's on there. He's just got that you know gravitas to him. It, it, he, but he's, he kind of just plays the same type of character all the time. He's kind of like Samuel Jackson, you know? It's just like, he, it, it, the way his voice is, it's just hard for him to play it any other way. I mean, you know, he can carry himself, you know, his body, you know, his body language and everything. He can carry that different, dress different, have his hair different. But, you know, once he opens his mouth, you know, you know that's Tommy Lee Jones. He's just that guy. He just has that demeanor. Uh, but you know it's good to me. It's just like Sam L. Jackson. He's like the same thing every movie, but I like it. I like it in every movie. And, you know, some people get burnt out on it. I think it's fine. I really like Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, the cinematography of this was great. Uh, you know, it's, it's called Stormy Monday. Uh, there's not a whole lot of storm going on. Like there's there's a rain shot. You know, where they're getting attacked by these henchmen. Because uh, uh was his name Brendan and uh, Melanie Griffith's character? They, uh, you know, eventually like get together. Uh, it, it turns out Melanie Griffith's character is uh, Tommy Lee, Tommy Lee Jones' character's ex girlfriend or ex wife or something like that. So everything's kind of like all connected together. And poor Brendan is like he was just trying to find a job, and now he's dragged into all this shit. You know, he, he, even if he quits the club, he's still like dating the girl that's. Would you know used to be with the guy that's like starting all this shit? So it's like really no way out for him, unless he just like gives up on everything that he really wanted right there. Uh, but I don't, you know the sim, like I said, the cinematography is really good. Uh, the directing is good. The acting is pretty good. Uh, but the story is just kind of weak, I guess. It and especially the ending. The ending is kind of just like. It was, it was really starting to pick up, too. It was, like, going and going. And I'm like, okay, this is getting pretty good. And then and then it just stops. And, and the way it ends is so... It just leaves you hanging there. Like, that was it? <laughs> it's, not, it's not even, like, a non-ending. It's like, well, that's it. All right, let's go back inside. I don't know. I just didn't like it. Uh, it, was, it was very anticlimactic, I guess. Uh, not the best ending. Or at least not the one I would have written. But uh, overall, you know, it was a good movie. Not high on my list. But I can see why it's, you know, like a cult, cult movie. I'm sure a lot of people like this. So uh, as far as special features go, there is a really only one. Well, you know, if you don't count, the, uh, I'm not counting the commentary. There's commentary on here, but there's a, uh, the critic, Neil Young. He kind of takes you to like a tour around Newcastle. And uh, all the locations they used for the film kind of talks about like how they like redid the whole part of town because it was like a really industrial type place, and they added like all these neon signs and, and all this stuff, and kind of really changed the whole look of, of Newcastle. Uh, and you know, he kind of goes in, in depth into the film about you know just you know certain you know, the performances of the people and you know kind of some backstories and some stuff. And uh, he also brings up a thing that I didn't even like put together when I was watching it is that this could have all been a dream. <laughs> so, like, because at the beginning of the movie, both characters, you know, in separate places are asleep, and he kind of points out the books that uh, Brendan's character, you know, the character Brendan was reading, because you can see him on his nightstand, like the Ernest Hemingway and stuff like that. Uh, he, and he just points out that they were both asleep and that they're both kind of like the love story is their mutual dreams like they're both dreaming of each other or something like that i don't know if that was the intention maybe he's reading too much into it uh i didn't catch on to that i mean now that he brings it up i'm like uh i don't i don't really see it especially the way it ended it didn't like end where they're like waking up and like oh it was all a dream no that doesn't happen it's like a story that plays out so I'm not sure where he got all that from, but, you know, it was an interesting insight, I guess. Uh, 
but yeah, overall, it's a decent release. I see the price has dropped down to like $18 on Amazon, so, and uh, I'm not sure what the price is on Diabolic DVD, but I'll be sure to leave the link there. Uh, you can figure out which one's better for you if you decide to get this. Uh, I don't want to say I recommend it because I didn't thoroughly enjoy it. But it's not bad. It's not a bad movie. So, uh, I mean, if you watch this, you'll probably like it. But uh, as far as, like, is it worth buying? I don't know. That's that's up to uh, the viewer, I guess. Uh, maybe try to watch it before you purchase. Maybe, uh, I'll give that advice. Uh, so, yeah, uh, links in the description. Uh, hit the like if you liked the video. Hit subscribe if you want to see more. And make sure you tour my channel for all the other unboxings and reviews. And I got some like trailer reactions I did. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you guys.